Hello and welcome back everybody to the Food Build Factory where today we're going to take a look at the Caravan Guard. Um, this is the lovely guy you can see on screen right now. And this is going to be another entry in my No RNG series where I'm trying to make character builds in Fallout 76 for every major weapon class that are relying on primarily non-legendary equipment with the exception of quest rewards. So on this occasion we're going to make a gunslinger build, uh, more precise we're using the fact finder which is a uh, reward for the new quest line added but it's very easy to get, uh, you get it very early on, you can get it actually at level 20 I think it is, I just dropped something here. Sorry uh, by the way I'm a bit off today because I actually just had a bit of trouble starting my uh, cyberpunk playthrough so on the plus side we're now having time to do this year build now back to the topic um yeah one thing that's to note here is that if you want to go for a gunslinger you can be way more powerful using a stealth gunslinger build um, obviously using stealth in that case um, best bet would probably be the uh, Gauss pistol, which honestly would be a good pick for this character either. But I decided to go for something like this here for the simple reason that I did explain it in one of my earlier videos. Um, the melee build that, well, you can all pretty much always um, do more damage if you're going for a sneak build or something so the builds I'm going to present here aren't necessarily the most powerful you can get just by uh, if you're not using legendary equipment however I try to go for an approach that I feel like you'd enjoy if you want to go for a gunslinger let's say yeah, a stealth gunslinger is a completely different story than a normal gunslinger, so if I'd say, yeah, I make a gunslinger build and make a complete um, stealth build, I'm not quite sure if someone who wants to do a gunslinger would be happy about that or would enjoy that, because it's definitely a lot different if you're playing the game like that. Therefore, I went for this year approach because I feel like this is the more classic revolver uh, western style gunslinger that you probably want to go for if you're interested in such a class. Now, an important information about gunslingers is that honestly in this game they are just not a good option. They're, I mean they're not bad exactly, the problem is that pretty much everything they can do you'll have other weapon classes that just outperform gunslingers so if we're talking about range uh, fire rate damage per shot yeah you're pretty much always better off using a commando or rifleman class in other entries of the of the series usually gunslingers were also weaker and had, uh, didn't have as much range as riflemen, for example, but they had things going for them. Most notably, they were often very uh, effective when it came to uh, vets, meaning that they cost very little AP, which isn't the case in this game. Now, it's not that pistols use much AP. The thing is rather that they're not better in terms of um, action point consumption than other weapons. Um, also, you do have the option to go for uh, automatic pistols, things like automatic 10mm pistols or something. And as a general uh, rule in this game, DPS goes over damage per shot. So, same with riflemen and commando uh, classes. Yeah, single shot weapons are definitely left behind when it comes to damage output. And especially when you're getting into the late game, uh, it's definitely a bigger problem. Because if you're fighting bosses, for example a sheep squatch or something, it's it's not like you can't uh, handle those guys, or over there there should be a scorch beast. You can definitely handle those situations. The thing is, it's a thing about time, you know. Um, if you're using this build, for example, yesterday I tr uh, uploaded the first video, but I actually uh, somehow forgot to turn on my microphone. So therefore I'm now uh, re-recording it. And 
Yeah, the, the problem is that I, f I was fighting a Sheep Squatch and while it's not hard to do, you can definitely succeed, you can just outmaneuver it and something, but the problem is it's going to take some time now. Um, Rewatching the video, I, I think it was like five, four or five minutes of just shooting the enemy, which isn't hard, as I said, it's just tedious. And therefore, yeah, you're better off with something like an automatic command, uh, automatic pistol guy, guerrilla character, for example. The thing though is that I feel like, yeah, as I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to make a gunslinger, you want to use something like this here, uh, revolver or such, you know, it's it's just a completely different playstyle. And another thing that should be said is, if you want to play like that, do it. There, there's no real reason why you need to invest into the end game. I mean, if you're powerful, uh, you will go to Scorched Earth a lot and do those kinds of events, but simply because everything else is not a challenge. Now, if you're playing this character, you're putting yourself into a disadvantage, obviously, but on the plus side, you can still enjoy the game. Now, the weapon is definitely powerful enough in order to play through the whole storyline of the game, explore every single bit of the map, you're not held back in that regard. It's just that you're, yeah, as I said, you're not the biggest help when it comes to endgame events. And yeah, that's all the problem there is. As you saw though, with mobs and super mutants and everything, we're not struggling that bit, that much. Now this guy here is a bit of trouble, but yeah, you can wear them down eventually. Well, at least it's a heavy piece, but mutants, not so good. Um, you're also uh, struggling quite a bit when it comes to um, close range fights. Now, getting swarmed can be a big problem for your character. You're also relying completely on vets in order to do damage. Now, obviously, you do damage without uh, vets too. Thing though is that, yeah, w since... Um, Pistols have a low uh, clip size, low, uh, only six shots before you have to reload. And in addition to that, we're not having the best damage output. Yeah, you really want to make your shots count. So therefore, unless you are really skilled when shooting, uh, most likely VATS is a better approach. It's not like uh, Commando, that's more forgiving. You know, if you're missing one or two shots, that's not a big deal. But with with vets, yeah, you're you're having a better time when you're using these uh, revolvers. Also, they do help greatly because there is a lot you can do in terms of damage. You can really increase your DPS that way because you can focus on uh, vets criticals and, and such. Now, on this occasion, we uh, occasion we do use vets all the time. However, uh, we're not really invested into vets criticals because we choose one weapon that has fairly high base damage and. I rather try to increase our average damage than to focus on VAT crits. You want to use them all the time too, they're still powerful, but you could take another approach, that's all I wanted to say. Thing is, gunslingers in this game are pretty much a walking compromise, yeah, no matter if you're going for a sneak or not, uh, you always will have to... Uh, deal with some compromises because and this is probably the biggest problem gunslingers have yeah your your complete damage or yeah, well not your complete damage but most of your damage comes from your gunslinger perks and those lie in agility so you're needing nine points of agility just to max out your gunslinger perks this is a problem because agility is one of the better stats in the game when it comes to good perks that enhance your damage. We're talking about things like Adrenaline, then there's more convenient things like Action Boy, which are especially important since we're doing a complete uh, VATS-based character. So yeah, there, there's just a lot of utility that lies in the, stat, uh, in the agility stat. And having to use nine points in agility just in order to uh, get the get good damage out of your weapon. This is counterintuitive, this is a problem. Now I've seen it time and time again and uh, uh, suggested that the damage perks, the gunslinger perks and guerrilla perks should move to uh, perception. However, 
Yeah, that's not going to happen, I'm pretty sure. That's just too big of a change. We have to live with that. And therefore, yeah, you have to make a compromise here and there. I'm going to uh, talk about that more when I'm going over the perks in the later part of the video. We're just clearing out those uh, few super mutants and then uh, I'm going to talk about the mutations and everything. Now, I do still feel that this character is a lot of fun and there's a lot of room for improvement. Now, obviously, we're using completely non-legendary uh, armor, which is a is a drawback. You can do a lot with armor in this game. If you're getting AP refresh pieces, for example, that give you better uh, AP refresh, or Vanguard, giving you a bit more damage resistance from the get-go. There's a lot you can do. Uh, bolstering, giving you a little bit of a safety net when you get in trouble and such. So, yeah. In terms of armor, there's a lot you can do, simply because we're not uh, having any legendary effects currently. And in terms of the weapon, while the, the fact finder we're using is actually really a solid gun, it has some flaws and there's better options too. Now, the uh, fact finder, for those who don't know, is a two-shot explosive 44 revolver that was added with the Brotherhood questline. And while two-shot explosive is a nice combination, it has its drawbacks. Um, short, in, short story, it reduces your armor penetration because while two-shot effect gives you 25% more damage overall, it does split your, uh, your bullets into two different projectiles that carry 62.5% uh, uh, of your overall damage. Meaning that every single bu uh, bullet does less damage than your uh, standard 44. And that means it punches through armor less. So therefore we're using quite a bit of damage. But on the other hand we're gaining some. So especially if you're going against highly armored uh, enemies. For example this here super mutants are such enemies. You're missing out on quite a lot and on paper Two-shot explosive combination definitely is better than uh, it is in all actuality. However, however, it's still nice. We're still getting quite respective damage, and the last thing is we do have less vets cost as an uh, as a legendary effect on the weapon. This one's perfect, pretty much, because we always want to use vets. So therefore, using less AP while using vets is a nice thing to have. The only downside is that yeah, the two-shot effect can mess with your vets. Now I feel like it's gotten way better than uh, at the beginning of the game. It was quite terrible. But yeah, every now and then you do miss even 95% chance shots uh, with two shot or sometimes you can even miss critical shots because yeah, it can mess with your uh, vets accuracy a little but overall it's not that big of a deal. It's manageable. As you see here, we're getting hits quite, yeah, qu quite reliably. It's not that big of a deal. And yeah, overall, what should I say? Your gunplay is definitely a bit faster. You're not killing enemies very fast, but you want to be on the move constantly. And this is definitely a playstyle that not only has a learning curve for your character, meaning you level up your perks, but also yeah, it's a bit more of a skilled playthrough, I'd say. I'm not exactly sure if that's the right wording, but yeah, it's definitely a playstyle where you as a player have to grow in a little bit. You have to learn and adjust a little bit to the way you're playing. Now, as I said, being on the move, dodging bullets, getting into cover a little bit, which just isn't necessary if you, for example, play a heavy gunner character, yeah, you're basically a walking tank, you can just uh, walk everywhere you want, wait till enemies shoot you so you can see where they are, line up your shot and that's it. There, there's not a lot of thought involved into those uh, playstyles, which has an, uh, a big appeal in my opinion, but yeah, you, you can't get away with uh, mistakes really easily when you're playing a gunslinger. That means that, yeah, as I said, you have to plan ahead a little, how you approach enemies, doing something like this here where you are getting out of, uh, yeah we're doing fine here, uh, you're getting out of um, out of reach of the character, jumping on cliffs and such, which is also an, uh, pretty much one of the funnier uh, experiences you can have, but 
yeah, it, it's not like you can stop thinking for a while and just play the game. Well, anyways, that was it in terms of gameplay. I'm now going to go over the mutations, the equipment again, and the perks, so stick with me if you want to see that, otherwise, bye guys. And let's get right into it. Now, first things first, we do have our mutations here. Bird Bones, Chameleon, Eagle Eyes, Herbivore, Marsupial, Speed Demon and Unstable Isotope. First things here, Chameleon and Unstable Isotope are completely unnecessary for this build. They are just leftovers from another build I made, but they don't have negatives to our character, so I just uh, didn't bother to remove them. What you want to have is Bird Bones, Eagle Eyes, Herbivore, Marsupial and Speed Demon. Bird Bones for extra agility. Eagle Eyes, extra perception, very nice, gives us a little boost when it comes to headshots, getting them easier. And extra crit damage is nice. As I said, we're using crits as often as possible, even though we're not fully specced into it. So having a bit more damage with crits is always a nice win. Herbivore, now this is one you can live without. Um, it highly depends on how you are thinking about consumables. Now, I usually leave them out when I do videos, simply because I want to show the... Uh, the base character without any buffs so if you're not uh, fine with using uh, consumables you see how your build would perform but herbivore has some great uh, benefits um, for example one that's very easy to get is corn soup that gives you a AP, uh, better AP refresh which is nice for our character and is very easy to make one of the better and more rare ones would probably be Sli uh, Blight Soup, which gives you, with Herbivore, I think it's 40% extra crit damage, which is massive. And keep in mind, food items you consume usually stay for half an, half an hour, so it's very easy to keep track of them, in my opinion. Therefore, Herbivore is here. Marsupial is just for our higher jumps and more carry weight and Speed Demon is one of the most important perks here because we're constantly reloading, we just have uh, 6 shots in our clip, so better reload speed is very nice and better movement speed helps us get away from enemies a little, dodge bullets a little better and stuff, so Speed Demon is a must have in my opinion. Also, you want to stay well hydrated all of the time for better AP refresh. It's something that's easy to get, especially since you, when you're questing, you basically never run out of uh, purified water. So, yeah. Uh, but I say, overall, it's not hard to stay well hydrated. Then, next thing here is our equipment. Here it is, as promised, the fact finder. Now, as you can see here, we played the, the whole gameplay and lost just a bit of uh, condition. Uh, now a lot of people complain heavily about the condition of the fact finder, but you can get around with it. Now we're quite invested in terms of perks into condition, but on the plus side we're also using the precise grip here instead of the aligned grip, which makes us slightly less efficient in VATs in terms of AP consumption. However, it massively increases our uh, condition, so I'd definitely go for the precise grip if I was you, but if you can manage the condition or have access to a few uh, repair kits and such yeah feel free to use the aligned one it would give you a slight edge however i felt like this is the best combination of mods for the bear, uh, for the weapon keep in mind the gold uh, on the weapon is an atomic shock skin and not the actual weapon you find uh, it looks exactly similar especially uh, with the only exception that yeah the parts that are golden here uh, would have the same grayish color than the rest of the weapon here Onto our equipment, we do have a grosser's backpack, so our uh, food and such uh, has reduced weight, but that's not necessary here. What you want to have is one of the radar under armors that's shielded, because it gives you extra perception and agility, which is probably the most important thing for our character. It also gives us one uh, extra luck. I mean, one luck isn't a lot, but yeah, it's nice to have because we're using luck. However, three perception and three agility, that's our main interest in this uh, piece here. And then, here you see it, we do a full set of heavy leather armor. The important thing here is the chest piece should be at least padded in order to reduce uh, explosive damage. We do have a perk that helps us with this, but yeah, the combination is nice. If you're fighting close uh, enemies close quarters, you can damage yourself quite severely if you're not prepared with the explosive effect of your weapon, so keep that in mind. 
On the arms I do have just uh, deep pockets in order to increase my carry weight a little. And on the on the legs I do have custom fitted which reduces our AP while uh, sprinting. You can use uh, deep pockets uh, too or uh, another good pick would be uh, lightweight or ultralight to give you a little bit more uh, action points but yeah I felt like custom fitted was nice here we want to be on the move constantly and not use AP up all that much it's better than having a bit uh, like 10% more uh, 10 action points more overall in my opinion now that leaves us with our perks here I intentionally left out legendary perks except with these two here now follow through only works if you're sneaking which we didn't do so yeah effectively the build I was showing now uh, didn't have this perk or didn't use it and what reds well I mean I think you can imagine how it works out if we're not having that it's just a very convenient perk but yeah one red a second is not the world it just helps us not use so much uh, right away but yeah we want to avoid getting hit anyway so that shouldn't be a problem to play without it now in terms of our usual standard perks we do have five strength for travel uh, pharmacy and bandolier these are just convenience perks so use whatever you uh, like here however we do have only one strength because of our debuffs from mutations so yeah having some carry weight perks definitely helps on this occasion now on per in perception we do have perception 9 using tank killer glow side and concentrated fire tank killer and glow uh, concentrated fire are very important extra uh, armor penetration as i said earlier we do have a light uh, slight uh, debuff here because of our two shot and uh, explosive effects so armor penetration is very important and concentrated fire we want to make sure we're hitting our target and at least one rank is necessary in order to target weak spots however on this occasion rank three is a nice pick because it makes sure that yeah at least our your second or third hit does even uh, shot does eventually hit glow side is just convenient we want to have fairly high perception so uh yeah using some extra perks here glow side is a nice pick sometimes you fight against glowing enemies but it's rather because we just have uh perception anyways endurance is fairly low so you want to get don't uh, you don't want to get into trouble all that much you want to stay away from your enemies we have a combination of fireproof and life giver here fireproof is kind of necessary now you don't need rank 3 rank 2 in combination with the padded chest piece is enough so we don't kill ourselves uh, with our explosive shots however yeah rank 2 is the minimum I would advise you to use and life giver is just there because well once you're getting into the territory where you can increase your special stats with legendary perks i would definitely advise you to go for at least rank 5 of endurance and use rank 3 of adamantium skeleton so you don't get crippled this can be inconvenient sometimes and not getting crippled could spare you a stim pack here and there or some frustration depending on how you know it however yeah you you just want to make the best out of this little AP uh, endurance we do have. Ideally, we wanted to have way more than four endurance. However, yeah, this is where it starts. Where wh what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, you're a walking compromise. You just need a lot of perk points in perception, agility, and and luck with a gunslinger build. So there's just not left, uh, not a lot left for the other stats. Charisma rank 4 now there's hardly any perk that gives you so much benefit for uh, for perk points so Lone Wanderer if you are playing alone is always a nice pick um, more tankiness and more AP refresh are great we want to have as much AP refresh as possible since our complete playstyle is based on vets so yeah that's a good pick you could get a slight edge in damage if you're using tenderizer for example but yeah, overall more tankiness and AP refresh felt a bit more important on this character. But it's definitely something if you can improve with legendary perks, go for uh, Charisma 7 and do include Tenderizer here. In terms of intelligence, yeah, not a compromise. We did want to use Demolitions Expert 5 because we do have an explosive weapon and giving us a slight edge and average damage is nice. Now, it's not like our uh, weapon does 60% more damage, but our explosive shots do a little bit more and it's definitely noticeable we're talking about something like 15 to 20 damage and trust me when I say you, you see it I mean if you're fighting a scorch beast or something it's not that important but 
for most day-to-day -day combat yeah it's definitely a noteworthy improvement also another side note you can use grenades and for example a fat man or something if you can carry it in order to complement your playstyle a little bit if you're getting swarmed use a use a mine a cryo mine or anything jump out of the way yeah you you'll see how that works out and it can definitely help you or if you let's say cripple a limb cripple someone's uh, legs or something you can then just wear them down with grenades and such it can be a great help and grenades are plentiful you're more likely to just throw them on the floor than to actually use them so having the slight edge is a nice thing gunsmith rank 3 arguably another thing you want to have at rank 5 sooner or later because the weapon breaks very fast four times faster than a standard 44 pistol standard 44 pistol is kind of okay it's not the best weapon in terms of condition but it's okay however as I said two shot doubles the amount of condition decrease you're getting and same for explosives so every time you shoot that weapon at an enemy you're actually hitting the enemy four times meaning that your weapon degrades four times so therefore the weapon can break very fast especially if you're using an aligned grip as I said earlier yeah it's definitely possible that you can uh, play with this weapon and have to repair it every 10 to 15 minutes so yeah we are invested into that agility our most important uh, perk tree we do have adrenaline rank 3 obviously we would like to have it at rank 5 but it's just not possible the downsides would be too great in terms of our gunslinger perks we have two gunslinger perks maxed out and one at rank 2 same as uh, before obviously this one at rank 3 would be nice but we're needing this one point for gunfu it's just a convenience but it's nice to switch targets and getting a little extra damage is nice too so the moment you're fighting a or your gunfu activates and you're fighting the second character you more than made up for the one missing point in master gunslinger and also it just enhances the the experience in my opinion it just feels like way more of a gunslinger you can chain up enemies very cool if you are at mid range and have some uh, enemies that go down in one shot especially once you have adrenaline going yeah you can really dish out some cool vets chains where you kill five enemies or something within the row it's definitely worth it and ad uh, action boy rank 3 now if you have access to legendary armor pieces and get some with AP refresh some power pieces then over time you can afford to not use action boy here but rather invest into something else that would be a nice port uh, let's just say you can live completely without action boy yeah you can then max out gunslinger and max out adrenaline that would be a nice combination that would be your end goal i'd say and last but not least we do have luck here uh bloody mess while it's not the best perk we as i said earlier I choose the route where I wanted to improve our damage overall by using Demolitions Expert, by using Bloody Mess. Now, we could live without Demo Expert and just go for an Intelligence 5 character or something, put everything we have left over into luck and go all in on criticals, which is nice, would maybe even be the better idea here. Um, the thing is, I will use heavily. Invest, uh, heavy investment into vets with my shotgunner so therefore I wanted to keep the crit uh, perks relatively low y you'll see what I mean now we do have bloody mess for a bit extra damage luck of the draw uh, very convenient arguably there's something better here as I said better criticals or something but it's just tedious if you have to repair your weapon every 20 minutes or so and in terms of fixed rewards the fact finder is probably the best gunslinger weapon you will find so it would be a shame to not use the fact finder just because it breaks so fast if you can handle it with such perks so therefore we do use luck of the draw however that's definitely a perk once you're getting legendary weapons on your own something like a anti-armor explosive less vets cost western revolver let's say that would be a perfect weapon weapon for this character and once you have that um, condition is definitely way easier to handle and you could use better criticals here instead of luck of the draw starch genes is obvious we want to keep our mutations and there are some mutations that are could that could be quite crippling to our character 
um, talons or twisted muscles. Um, yeah, we, we heavily rely on headshots, so having an, a mutation, for example, that reduces our gun accuracy, that would be tremendous, so we need storage genes. Easy as that. And last but not least, critical savvy. As I said, we're not heavily invested into criticals, so, but yeah, using just 55% of your critical meter is just one of the m most powerful perks if you're using VATS, in my opinion. So yeah, there's that. Now, another choice I went for for a time was using Grim Reaper Sprint instead of Bloody Mess. So we have a chance every time we kill an enemy to get a little bit, uh, to get our AP back. Which works very nice too, however, I felt like with our combination, our AP come back so fast that it wasn't really necessary and therefore I went with a little bit more damage. It's, yeah, it's, it was just a personal choice. You, you, you should try both if you can, ideally, and yeah, that would make it so you can choose for yourself, but... Yeah, I went with Bloody Mess in this occasion, it's just 10% uh, it's just 10 extra damage points or something, but can make the difference between one-shotting and two-shotting a ghoul, so yeah, I felt like that was the better option here. Well, anyways, that was it, that was my no RNG character here, the Gunslinger. I hope you enjoyed it, as I said there will be more, but maybe I'm focusing a little bit on Cyberpunk in the near future. For now though, there are uh, more Fallout builds coming, so keep your eyes, uh, eyes open, guys. Have a nice time. Bye.